Hello and welcome to this new video. I'm so sorry my webcam and my original voice didn't record it. Uh, so I'm gonna do a voice over. In this video, I will teach you how to use Viscom AI, which is an AI used by a lot of uh, car companies, but you can really do a lot of stuff with it. It's mainly used to uh, add uh, colors, shadows, highlights to sketches you already made, but you can then further refine the image as you want which is very cool and uh, we're gonna look at how to use this tool in this video so please uh, keep watching. For this video I use the free plan you can already do a lot of stuff uh, the upgraded plans start at $50 a month uh, but you can already do a lot of stuff here you can see uh, some experiments I did just before the video so I started with this awful uh, coffee cup drawing and I made a render of it the color of my drawing was black and white, so this has an importance on uh, how the render will look. And uh, this is what uh, was made from it. My prompt was coffee cup. We'll see in a minute how to use a prompt in your image. Um, this is a sketch I made on Mid Journey uh, just before the video also. So I just typed in sketch of a futuristic motorcycle, upscaled it, downloaded it, and uh, imported it in uh, Viscom. And uh, Viscom really added all the colors, the shadows, the highlights, uh, the metallic texture, just really amazing. So I just prompted a uh, motorcycle. We'll see in a minute how I did this. By the way, you can import images, but also add new layers and import 3D objects, which is really cool uh, if you want to add color on something you made in black and white. Uh, this works just as in Photoshop, so you have this system with layers. Uh, the one on top uh, is the one that you see. They also have blending modes. Uh, currently, only the multiply blending modes is available, which hides all the brighter pixels than the image below. Uh, you can also play around with opacity. And uh, when you export this document, you can, you, you can export it as a PNG, but also a PSD file in order to keep all those layers to keep the blending modes and the opacity so there's really a lot of stuff you can do with it uh, and this really makes it easier to edit your images further in Photoshop in case you want to do that. So once your image is imported you can use the arrow tool which is the transform tool and hold shift if you want uh, to avoid those kind of distortions this will keep the transformation uniform um, and uh, yeah then you can type in the prompt on the right side uh, on the right panel uh, then click on render if this is your first uh, generation refine is to when you use in paintings or one uh, light slightly change uh, the image you already generated uh, next, you can use a uh, render style. There are currently five or six uh, ones available. Um, I'm mostly using the Viscom General, which makes uh, stunning images and it just adds all those textures, colors, highlights, shadows. Uh, but the other ones, uh, you can see how they work by clicking on the small E. Uh, volume renderer is made to to give a 3D aspect object um, without any colors. Auto interior is because uh, a lot of their clients are car constructors and designers, so they need all those details. Most of us want to use them. You can also uh, choose the pastel um, color scheme, which is cool for um, stock imagery and makes it really uh, easy to cut out stuff because there aren't any shadows. So if you need to cut something out really fast uh, using the magic one tool in Photoshop, and that's the one to go. Uh, once you chose your style, uh, you can mess around with play around, excuse me, with the drawing influence. If I set it to 100, then nothing will change. If I set it to zero, a lot will change. The number of images, uh, well, wh when you pay, you can render four images at a time, just uh, just like in Mitroni. Uh When you're using a free plan as me, you can only use one. So. Uh, Check out how to, to get more of your images if you want to pay. Um, but I think the free version is already very, very cool. Uh, if I set the drawing inference to a zero, I will get a totally new images, uh, a totally new image. And uh, if I set it to 100, uh, it will keep a lot, a lot of my image. Once I'm ready, I, uh, I clicked on generating. As you can see, it will take some loading time, but 
quickly enough. And here you can see those amazing results. Because my driving influence was very high, it kept most of the details. You can see the changes by hiding canvas. Uh, you can regenerate if you're not satisfied with the results. And uh, you can also add it as a new layer, which will then duplicate the layer, as you will see just in a moment. So if you're happy with the results, just press confirm and uh, then you can edit further and access the layer panel again. So here you can see I added as a layer, I confirmed. Um, I can then go back into the layers panel on the right. And you can see it made uh, two uh, layers. Um, like, like I said previously, you can play around with them and uh, you can export also each one of those layers separately. Now let's go back to the create mode. So tap on the magic wand again and uh, then go into in-painting, choose the in-painting tool, excuse me. Draw your selection as close as possible to the elements you want to change. Uh, currently they don't have the pen tool such as uh, such as they have in Photoshop, but uh, try to be the most precise you can uh, and draw the selection about a part of the image that you want to change. Uh, here I went for the wheel and uh, I'm gonna ask it to make a red wheel, see how that changes. But I want it to really keep the texture. Uh, so what I should have done here is not type in red wheel, but red metallic wheel. This will have, um, this will have kept uh, maybe the results because uh, the new wheel I'm gonna have is gonna be made of um, of uh, classic wheels, so I don't know if that's letter or, or how you call this in English, uh, but it's gonna be a classic wheel. The driving influence is very important. If I set it to uh, like, I mostly use 50%, so uh, my prompt is as important as the original picture there is on the screen. It takes a little bit of time re of time of rendering, depends on the number of people uh, that are using the, the tool. So here you can see like it changed the texture and only part of the of the wheel was red. So uh, I was a little bit disappointed, but I think my prompt wasn't specific enough. I should have said red metallic wheel. And you can find in again um, the the layer and see how it changed. Well, if I really wanted the wheel red, I should have gone in Photoshop and just edit that. But uh, I'm presenting this tool for all people that aren't familiar with Photoshop yet. So uh, yeah. So now let's explore the other tools. First of uh, first of them is the color. You can choose whatever you color, whatever color you want. The color has an influence. If I paint with red, my results will be red. Uh, then you can use a brush tool to brush around, use Ctrl Z or the little arrows uh, next to export to undo or uh, redo what you just did. Uh, this works just as in Photoshop, uh, so you can just draw and uh, say, hey, I don't want it. Uh, you can also use the erase tool if you only want to erase part of what you did. So uh, like only this side, for instance. Um, then the transform tool is to really uh, make things bigger and so on. But here I don't have anything to show it. The uh, shape tool, you can use box, an ellipse, a line play with the thickness, the opacity, set the fill or not. So I'm gonna drop the thickness slightly and the opacity also, so you can really see how that plays around. If I, I take the fill, you will see like the entire ellipse. If I uh, uncheck the fill, you will see I only get a stroke uh, and uh, the stri stroke thickness is set by the settings of the tool. So uh, you can really play around with that and uh, make a lot of cool stuff directly in uh, the app if you're not at ease with drawing yet. So uh, you can start from scratch and uh, draw here. I recommend using a graphic uh, tablet. Uh, here I was painting with a mouse uh, and my hand was a little jittery because <laughs> I just drank a, a cup of coffee myself. So here yeah, I'm gonna paint some glasses really quickly so you can get an idea of uh, how well this tool works when uh, going from scratch. I mean, like they're, they're really bad. I feel ashamed for uh, this driving, but you will see the results are pretty good um, for what I did. If I took the time to really uh, sketch this out better, 
like the results would have been better. I think this tool is really amazing for everyone studying in architecture or art and uh, taking his sketches to the next point or exploring concepts. If you don't know what colors to use, for instance, in your image and you just drop in your sketch, maybe you will, you will get some inspiration. It's also a good idea to show um, to show to your clients, for instance, if you're not sure, the, if you don't want to spend like hours uh, making all those shadow highlights, colors, you can just show a prototype to a client and if he says, hey, that looks cool, I want that, well then, yeah, then you go can go further and edit it. Uh, otherwise, you can, otherwise if he says, hey, that's not cool, you will not have lost hours uh, on all those, on all that editing. So I think it's really cool. Here you can see how I play with the drawing influence. Um, like if I bump it up, you can see that it will, it will keep more of my drawing. Uh, as you can see, it's not perfect yet. This tool is still improve it, improving and the more people will use it and pay for it, the better it will get. Uh, in comparison with Midjourney, uh, this tool is very cool because it makes several layers. Uh, you can easily change the image. Um, and it also keeps the background really uh, white, which is perfect for cutting out stuff or editing them. Uh, you don't get all those details in the background as you get with Midjourney. Uh, so uh, it's a different tool and it's very, very cool. Here you can see the results when I'm setting the driving reference to a zero. I'll do a little test with uh, one of my images in Midjourney just to see if it can uh, add, um, if it can add a sword on my image uh, from an image that hasn't been generated in Viscom itself. I mean, for instance, the inpainting tool and the uh, refine uh, mode in Viscom work better with images that they generated, but if you use it on, on images that you import, uh, it will work uh, way less. So uh, I'm showing here, for instance, how this will affect my my uh, my picture, uh, and uh, you will see that indeed it didn't change anything or uh, almost nothing. So uh, I didn't get my sword. Uh, I use the in painting mode, but Normally, this is what you use uh, once you have generated the images. So first generate and then use those images. Uh, if you want to in-paint, uh, then better use Midjourney. This works better. Uh, still comparing both of those. Like So I know I spoke a lot and quickly during this video, but I really wanted to give all the information I pulled so that you guys can try it out, see if this can go into your workflow and the tools you use. Um, thanks you for watching and uh, I will hold you on if there are any major updates on this tool and uh, yeah, see you next time.